honorable trustee and core committee members of CBA. And we are honored to have the kind presence of Mrs. Jatati Bhattacharya, Secretary General and CEO of Shiksaitan Foundation. Our esteemed panelists for today are Mrs. Koili De. Uh, sir, could you please mute yourself? Our esteemed panelists for today are Mrs. Koili De, Principal Sushila Birla Girls School, and Mrs. Kavni Kuller, co founder and principal Akshar School. Also joining this meet today are the faculty members of Calcutta Business School. Calcutta Business School is a residential institute, keeping in mind the need for management education in Eastern India and being an autonomous institution, it offers AICT approved PGDM courses designed as per the latest industry needs by an expert team of faculty and advisors comprising of both renowned academicians and industry leaders and has recently introduced a BBA in Business Analytics course in collaboration with Macau. And representing Calcutta Business School today as moderator is Dr. Shuvendu Mudundar, Associate Professor, Calcutta Business School. This event is being live streamed on Facebook for our viewers. I now request Dr. T. Ma'am to please uh, well, uh, you know, deliver a welcome address and uh, set the tone for the day. Uh, thank you, Madhushri. A uh, very good evening to everyone. My greetings from Shikshayatan Foundation, the apex body of Calcutta Business School, for uh, to all of you for joining us today. Um, our guest speaker are uh, Mrs. Koili De, principal of uh, Shushila Birla Girls School, and Mrs. Kullar uh, from uh, Akshar. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, principal in charge of uh, Calcutta Business School, our moderator for the day, Dr. Mojumdar, all my colleagues, faculty members, teachers, students, whoever has joined us today. You know, once Charlie Chaplin, he uh, had said, and I'm going to quote him, nothing is permanent in this wicked world, not even our troubles. But sometimes, despite our best effort, we fall prey to our apprehensions, exhaustion, and negative experiences that do not allow us to be at our best. Alternatively, if you could use uh, the following quote in this manner, that the great philosopher Seneca once said, and I quote him, uh, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. This is all to do with our stress management. And we have seen it, you know, during this last two years, so many changes, so many things have, you know, we have come across and we have managed it. How did we manage that? I'm sure we made some planning because we are our, I keep saying, you know, we are our own leaders and we can do so many things with our mind. Sometimes what happens is despite our best of effort, we fall prey to our own apprehension, exhaustion, and some experiences which are very, very challenging. And probably it does not allow us to reach the goal. While some of this is unavoidable, it is often seen that most of our stress is manageable with lifestyle changes and a little help from our very, very close people. So you need to open up, you need to share. Today's session is aimed at exploring what we can do for ourselves and the people around us to alleviate stress that would definitely lead to overall well-being. Our two very eminent speakers, very experienced speakers would set an example of what one is capable of achieving despite various pressures. And I'm sure all our viewers are going to learn a lot from their experiential tips and also tricks. Thank you once again and welcome. We are all Thank waiting you. to hear from you. Over Thank to you, Madhushri. Thank you, ma'am. Our uh, let me introduce our panelists now. Our first panelist 
is Mrs. Koyli Day, principal of Sheena Billa Girls School. Mrs. Day has 28 years of experience in the field of education, of which the last two years has been as the principal of Sushila Birla Girls School. She has been associated with the school since the year 2000 as an English teacher and became the head of department in 2011. In 2014, Mrs. Day was appointed as the senior school coordinator and took over as principal in 2013. <laughs> Her rich exposure to the CBSE curricula has empowered her with a diverse and innovative approach as an academic leader. She graduated from St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, and went on to become to, to do her MA. She completed her BA from Calcutta University. Mrs. Day considers the central purpose of education to be character building. She would like to see her students mm -hmm. emerge into the world as confident, aware, and morally up, upright adults who can contribute towards nation building and aspire to call themselves citizens of the world. She strongly believes that each child is special and unique and encourages parental involvement as the need of the hour is open communication between the school and home. Thank you for joining us, ma'am. Thank you, Madhushree. I now introduce our second panelist, Mrs. Kavni Kullar is the co-founder and principal of Akshar School. She started her career at the Indian Institute of Cerebral, Pla Cerebral Palsy and moved on to join Ms. Nina Singh, founder of the VIN Montessori School to make it the first inclusive Montessori. Recognizing the need for inclusion of children with additional needs in a mainstream school, Akshar, the first inclusive ISP school in Kolkata was established in 1998. She is the trustee and the principal of Akshar, who believes that it is the right of children with disabilities to study alongside mainstream children, not a privilege. Akshar is a diverse blend of young minds with a common goal to achieve excellence through compassion and care. It grew out of the necessity to build a school constantly searching for alternatives to traditional systems. She sees every child as unique, and if given the right opportunity, they can be nurtured to achieve their fullest potential. She has presented papers on inclusion and building a relationship of mutuality in several forums, stressing the need for education for all, addressing principals, teachers, parents, and children. She hopes to open a life skills training center for adults with disabilities, equipping them with the necessary skills for employment. She is a member of the governing body and school managing committee of the Indian Institute of Cerebral Palsy. She is a member of the internal quality assurance cell, Loreto College in the field of education. She is the founder of the Hanson Street Arts Center, a platform for adults and children alike to showcase their creativity. When it comes to the protection of the environment, in her own small way, she chooses to contribute to the global environmental movement by adopting simple and sustainable changes to her daily living. Her motto, the world would alas be so much duller if we were all one color. Welcome to this session, ma'am. And may I add that ma'am has since day one supported our webinars and she has been a part of uh, other webinars as well. Welcome back once again, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, and I now request our moderator for the day, Shubhendu sir, to please take the session forward. Thank you, Ms. Pal, <clears throat> for your excellent introduction as well in every session. You are doing excellently this job. It is my pleasure to be uh, a moderator of this session. I am first grateful to our core committee members, especially uh, respected Mr. Gotopi Bhattacharya, to connect us with the dignitaries of Kolkata from different versatile background. At last, uh, 20, uh, on 21st February, that is International Mother Language Day, we have celebrated. Previously, we are celebrating each week two or three events. Basically, with an objective, it is a social obligation. Just like the uh, model of Carol that he told, yes, we have to address the social issues. We have no other intention. Our intention is that we are socially responsible. That's why Sikshayatan Foundation is working relentlessly basically towards the upliftment of education, not for the 
teaching of the books only, there are other faculties too. So I do feel personally, this topic is very relevant within this time in post pandemic, basically the pandemic is the term that is creating some fear psychosis within our mind that which wave is coming. Last, uh, uh, in 2019, I visited a few countries in Africa. Then doctor said that as per the protocol of the government, we need to take vaccine. So I was surprised why. That time it was uh, quite uh, surprising me because there are some yellow fever. I was also surprised and but I have to take the vaccine. But just after six months, a few terminology came into our life, like this vaccine, social distancing, the mask, sanitizer. This is a part and parcel of our daily life and change the mindset of people and simultaneously the mental health. A person, whether he is poor economically backward or I mean the top aristocratic society, it is meaningless. Corona is common to all. So therefore stress is a platform that bring all class of people. That is, it actually breaks the classifications of the society, categorization of the society. And we are now in the same platform. In this background, we got two eminent panelists today, and we are really fortunate to have this within us to this eminent, uh, though we have talked with them earlier in few other occasions, but ultimately it came into reality today. So uh, we welcome already formally welcome by Madam as well as Madhusri. So we'll talk to this coming one word with uh, Mrs. Koilide, principal, Sushila Villa Girls School, Madam Namushkar. And with us also, Mrs. Uh, Kabnet Kullar, co-founder and principal, Oxford School. Madam, also my Namaskar. humble Namaskar to all of you. Namaskar. And also in this session, our uh, esteemed faculty members, my most <clears throat> beloved students, and also other dignitaries and delegates and participants, those who are watching in live streaming session from Facebook. We are the teacher. So our first identity with the teacher, we are working, not actually teaching at the subject. We are teaching them in the different aspects of their life. And it is a foremost duty starts and responsibility. Normally it is taken by the primary level, secondary level, higher secondary level. So the base, the basis, we have studied one prose piece I can remember. It was in our school days that was called in the normal days technology for mankind. And that time, it was given by Jacob Branowski, one very quote and unquote, a very small terminology told that yes, basic pattern remains same, quote unquote. That means what the pattern will save them, it will continue rest of the life. So the base is important. Based on that basis, we want to work. That's why the study came. That was the experiment started by the experimentation of Lord Macaulay in the 1835 said sent by the British Parliament. Then it is continuing with the experiments of the Sriniketan and Santiniketan experiment of Rabindranath Tagore. Then also the education experiment of Swami Vivekananda, because it is the incarnation of the four yogas, which is not an actually nothing new. It became commercialization today. Yoga is done by different uh, um, corporate sectors. They are practicing in the training session for stress relief. But basically it is 5,000 years back came from the Indian ethos and values. So there is a question of Raj Yoga that is a part of the meditation which comes into our daily life. It is nothing to be advertised. Now that came in when the domain we are teaching to our uh, young learners that yes, you have to go to corporate sector. You have to face the challenges. If there is a challenge, automatically there is stress. And normally it comes to our mind that the basic pattern comes from the change. If there is any change, then it means that actually, which is present, we need to transform into desired. So now present to future, current to desired, there is a transition. From this transition, there is a question of unfreezing, 
we have to apply some movement and then come to a status quo rephrasing. In this point of time, automatically some resistance come in each every edges of that. What are those resistance? Out of those resistance, people come into a pattern of stress. And based on the stress, we need to overcome it. It is not that we have to go for stress. So therefore, there are some potential sources. It may be sometime from the outside world that is environment. It may be within itself that is inner psychological stress came from individual stressors. It sometimes came from that is personal and some from the society or from any organization. If we now these three level, that means outside, there is environment, society. One is from my own organization where I'm working. And second, third is my personal, individual. If we can now combine, then we get the individual differences of people in terms of their perception, in terms of their job experiences, in terms of social obligation, their locus of control, both in internal and external. Some people are internally controlled, some are externally controlled. So it is internal, external control and their efficacy as well their personality standard. Based on that, what they experience stress and how they overcome the stress, based on that some consequences come. What are these consequences? These consequences may be some psychological symptoms, might be some physiological symptoms, and automatically it affects us, our behavioral pattern. So on this basic platform, we want to start our today's discussion. So I will ask not any question because you are much learned than me. We want to make an interactive session today initially that what you are looking your platform because you are you experimenting just like a lab in your school, uh, in the society, the students are coming, how you are looking that what are the basic possible stress, both of uh, our extreme panelists, I will just uh, over to you. First I am asking uh, Mrs. Coeli there that how you are looking this stress in today's life, especially for the children, or from which community you are serving the society. And then we come to uh, Mrs. Noni Kula. Now the session over to you, uh, Mrs. De, please. Thank you, Mr. Mojumdar. Uh, while you were talking, I was uh, reminded of what uh, Brototi ma'am was talking about a short while back. Uh, and, uh, you know, on a holiday, I remember seeing in one of the hotel rooms a framed picture which said, you are always free to be happy. And this thought actually stuck with me. It remained with me. And uh, it uh, somehow echoes the feeling that uh, being at peace is actually the ultimate position of power. And this is something, if you, if you, if you can uh, remember this, and if you believe this, and if you try and inculcate habits that will bring a sense of peace in the chaos inside and outside, then I think our lives are sorted. Like, sir, you just mentioned that children are coming back. And uh, what we see now is the fact that stress will always be there. Stress was there earlier, stress is there now. Uh, you know, children face various pressure uh, areas, for example, academic pressure, peer pressure. Um, children nowadays are very conscious of their bodies. So body shaming is a term that we see being uh, thrown around nowadays. Also, this new normal has uh, resulted in the emergence of children who are addicted to gadgets. As a result, their entire sleep, sleeping and eating pattern has uh, uh, been reversed. That in itself creates a life of pressure. Also, there is the fear of contamination, this constant fear, what if I contact, contract this infection? That fear of contamination is there. The fact that now after almost two years, children are coming out of their homes, coming out of what had become their comfort zone. You know, if I'm not in the mood, I'm not going to switch on the camera. I will just wear my school shirt and forget about what I'm wearing underneath that. 
um, if I'm not uh, interested, I'm just not participative. The onus is on me. But now from this comfort zone, they are now being forced to enter the physical classroom, the physical school building, and that is creating a sense of panic. What they could manage uh, uh, earlier in the digital and uh, non-physical, let's say, world of theirs, now no longer can they do so. Examinations, unfortunately enough, we've seen that children most of the times have used unfair means. We have had parents and uh, caught on camera helping children uh, during their exams. Now, all these things are not possible in a physical classroom. Children are sitting in the classroom. The fact that they, uh, you know, the learning gaps are exposed, exams are in the physical mode. All these things have created a world of pressure around them. So pressure and stress both are definitely a big part of their lives now. But like I said, it will always be a part of everyone's life. I mean, I'd like to know anybody who says I, I don't feel stressed or there's no pressure in my life. But the trick is to know how to control or to know how to manage and to keep it within permissible limits. I believe uh, that's the answer today. Mrs. is Kullar. <laughs> yes, thank you, um, madam. Yes, Mrs. Kullar, please, please. Yeah, please. Uh, Mr. Majumdar, I would say that Koili Ma'am has said, you know, everything uh, possible. And uh, I, I just, uh, you know, uh, like she had read in a hotel, I read, like Abdul, uh, our past president Abdul Kalam said, smile in the morning to whoever you meet. That possibly will be the only smile for that person throughout the day. So I kind of, put my beaming smile at everybody in the house in the morning because I've got children who are grown up and working. So don't know what they're going to be dealing with through the day, whatever stress, but put on that smile because that's how you've got to move on in life. Um, yes, uh, you know, I would like to repeat everything, but our examinations have started. And as uh, Koeli Ma'am said, uh, from using uh, the Google app to put in an answer and now to put your answer on a piece of paper and they're seeing that they have not fared that well and there's a the, the marks have you know literally come down and uh, so it's it's a challenge for us now as teachers to work with the children and get them back because children are children they've used unfair means or whatever they've, they've had a two years which have not been very happy because they've been home but now that they come to school I think it's become more our responsibility to get them back to knowing how to learn to knowing how to it's going to be quite a task but teachers are fighters and we will do it and we will pull them up again yeah yeah so excellent uh, start of this session that we are um, ongoing the session with some interactive session. Some questions came to us and already a few um, interactive questions given by our students that what we can, as a flow of the event, what we can uh, discuss that they will be happy. That uh, just uh, uh, one query, whatever we can uh, just uh, give into uh, Koeli ma'am that uh, what are basically the possible pressures that you have already told. So do you think that today's education pattern in our country, the syllabus pattern, the way we are teaching? Okay, one uh, statement I should not say because all madam presented, they will be angry with me. But I know the children are very angry with the term madam because ma'am will rebuke them. Sometimes they have told, because they are always with some pressure. There are task. Is it possible that to reduce the task, do you think that it is extra pressure to them? Uh, if by task you mean homework, is that what you're referring to? Yes, homework. Because whatever the 
assignments they should have if we do complete within their school time, school hour, so that the extra hour that they could to get, they can go for some laser hour. Similarly, for machines also here, Professor Shengupta is there. He could probably admit in production management, whether we are go for work study, motion study, time study, we calculate a machine is working. We have to give them some laser hour. Yes, Professor Shengupta, am I correct? Absolutely. Some uh, leisure hour in a way that, that those need to be uh, also uh, uh, done some servicing, you know, regular servicing. It's not breakdown servicing, but the regular uh, planned servicing has to be done. Yeah. So anyway, the effective hours of a factory is not seven days, but six days. Well, one day is always uh, count, uh, taken for all the servicing and upkeep upkeeping of the machines and the factories. Thank you so much. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Mrs. Dev, please. Uh, Mr. Mojumdar, uh, what you're saying about if all the assignments and the tasks could be completed within the working hours, say, 8 to 2, if that is the time for a school, for a child's uh, school life, school timing, that is eminently uh, possible in the lower classes. But uh, as you grow older and as you grow, uh, you know, go up to the higher classes, to be able to finish everything by the time you go home, that is actually an impractical uh, expectation. Let's put it this way. And like uh, Professor Sengupta talked about machines that need time to rest, definitely children need the time to rest. But here I would like to add that this is a two-way system in the sense that the teacher, when she's in class, She's trying to, uh, she's no longer teaching. She's a guide. She's a facilitator. And today we have moved away from the kind of teaching that we were exposed to in our student life. In those days, most of it was chalk and talk. Nowadays, it's not chalk and talk. If you peer closely into any classroom, I'm quite sure you will see that knowledge is being imparted to the students without the students realizing that it is being done so. There are quizzes activities, drama, excursions, so many things uh, through which knowledge it gets imparted. It is not information, it is knowledge. And what the child needs to do when he or she goes home in the higher classes is to internalize that. Without the internalization, if that is what you're referring to as task or homework, so be it. But this internalization is required for senior students. Otherwise, when it will come to an assessment, um, where their, uh, what will I say, where their sincerity or whether where their knowledge is going to be tested, that's the time they will fumble. So this time that they need to internalize whatever it is that they have uh, absorbed during their class hours, this is extremely important. And by this, I do not, and I repeat, I do not refer to time that the children spend in tuition classes. You know, tuition classes is not the answer. The answer is self-learning. Now, if you can do that uh, by being conscientious, when by paying attention when you're in class, then the amount of time you need to internalize what you have learned in class is bare minimum. But if you're not doing your bit in school, then you cannot uh, cry foul. Like I said, it's a two-way system. So teachers give, but students also need to learn to take it in and internalize. That's the beauty of the system. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Thank you, Madam. Actually, from the continuation of our word of your word, internalization, I am just referring another query uh, to our cabinet cooler, Madam. That yes, how, how can we counsel the parents? So the students, because a certain hours in a day, they are in the school or the education center, institute or college, etc. But most of the time, rest of the time, they are in the their house. So they are controlled by their parents because there's pressure come from the house families also. So related to this stress, what is your suggestion for the parents to alleviate or the prevent a child's stress while at the same time keeping them productive. That means they are working, they are basically their other mental faculties, they are, these are growing. What's your suggestion? Please, Madam, please. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Mazumdar, uh, sorry, Dr. Mazumdar. Um, firstly, uh, you know, we need to, um, let's say, lessen or prevent a child's stress is, firstly, is counseling parents because they have their own aspirations. There, if it's a family with doctors, they're expecting their child possibly to be a doctor. They have such high aspirations. And at the same time, I would also say, we can't even blame the parents because a lot of them really don't know what is now available. There's so much, there are so many alternative careers that are available that we need to, you know, educate them. Then <clears throat> there is much more beyond just being a doctor or be going into IIT or, you know, going into be a lawyer. Uh, when you say that, um, uh, so it's really, uh, I would say, parental, you know, the way they nurture their child, their positivity, uh, it's them in their homes that have to give that confidence to their child and know, the, know their child in terms of whether it is their skills, what else are they so good in? And I would say also that the two years of, that they have been home, there's so much that the parents have got to know about their child. Earlier, their children would come to school, do all the activities and go home. Now the child is sitting at home and we are asking them to showcase whatever their talent is or whatever they know. And the parents are watching and they're seeing that their children are so talented. There are so many skills that the children have that they didn't know. So when you ask also the question that uh, how, how much, how can they spend their time, uh, you know, uh, productive time and academic time, I would say this is very uh, student oriented and it's student to student. Uh, you know, every child, it depends. There are some very quick learners and they can, you know, spend that much more time in doing other but I would say parents need to encourage their children, even if they take, you know, if they take more time in learning, but they need to encourage them to uh, do some time management and allocate time, encourage them to develop their other skills. And, you know, in a productive, I mean, I won't say productive manner, but certainly it is, uh, you know, developing themselves, like we say, holistically. That's what I would say. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you, excellent. So uh, it is uh, another issue that uh, both of you can address on the both uh, these cases because you are basically um, teaching the students, grooming the students, and also arranging their life in a different way so that they are enlightened with different avenues. They are growing in the different with the different faculties. My question is that what are the normal options available for these uh, children to grow along with their academics? Not only academics, there are sports, games, recreation, everything is there. We can remember, uh, probably you can remember the in, uh, in West Bengal board once upon a time in our days, there was uh, two papers where there work education and physical education, which was the part of the education system, the marks added to the main, uh, the degree with the divisions, the, because that marks added to the, getting the division of the star marks, etc. I don't know whether it is at all remain or it is not a part of the system. These extracurricular activities when in the class timing, we enjoy it basically that internal, uh, that means indoor games, outdoor games. And that was to us, if I can remember my childhood days, that it was stress-free for me, uh, definitely. So what are your options or suggestions? Actually, whatever today's session we are going on, it is live streaming session. At the end, we want to conclude in such a way so that a message can be carried forward to the society that what should be the ideal option. Because it is not that we are identifying the different issues and the problems, no. Or what are the challenges that needs to be um, modified in such a way that there is a model society can be formed toward the society 5.0. This is the objective of this, this now normal situation. So 
madam koeli uh, madam to you that what are the possible arrangements normally we should have or we can provide so that students can enjoy their studies along with their normal assignment home tasks whatever they are within the syllabus curriculum thank you for the question sir i think uh, you know giving them an experience and not looking at it like studies and this experience um, that we would like to provide to all our students would be a mixed bag you mentioned the term extracurricular uh, during your madhyamik days i think we've moved a long way since those days because now we no longer refer to um other activities other than academics as extracurricular we call it co curricular so it is moving alongside that in itself will tell you that the emphasis has shifted the importance has shifted it is equally important uh as uh, say curricular activities now in most schools you will have singing dancing dramatics um uh, anything that a child is exposed to you know the child needs to be exposed to different things for her to realize what she is good at or what she is not so good at or what she enjoys doing so apart from the usual in our school we have certain for the older lot i'll tell you we have certain clubs which are a little different keeping in mind the future for example we have a club called swabhiman this actually uh, the bigger aim of this club is to hone entrepreneurial skills in the girl child so uh, children actually get in touch with small organizations where women are working they work with them and uh, most of them uh, later on in their lives we see that they have gone on to become budding entrepreneurs we have various events in school which are handled completely by the child by the student of course to uh, teachers are there as guides as facilitators for example we have this uh, fest competitive competitive fests where children from uh, different schools come and they compete there again getting uh, sponsorship planning everything is done by the students we have another fest which is quite unique i think mrs kullar will be happy to know that we have a fest for uh, differently abled children and only them uh, so and all our students who are part of the social service club they take great pride in organizing uh, this event and we believe that it creates or it uh, you know it it helps them to become a little more sensitive to everybody around them so like i said school is no longer a building made of brick cement mortar school life is one which gives you a taste a slice it gives you it shows you a slice of life you know an experience of different things it helps you to grow as an individual and it helps you to become empowered uh, and by empowered i don't mean a young girl who can speak english and who dress smartly who dresses smartly i don't mean that at all i mean a person who can think for herself who can stand on her feet and who can take her own decision and she can call the shots that is what i mean by an empowered child and that is what we try to do in the uh, you know in the in the 14 years that we have a child with us that that's our aim ultimately that when she passes out uh, through the gates of the school once she's 17 18 years old she can be called an empowered individual because of the different experiences that we are able to give her very good madam and your definition on empowerment is uh, definitely it is encouraging because we normally uh, go for this empowerment scheme and different empowerment program but uh, what the way you have defined it is something new because it not only actually give them the strength but basically they will understand that how to go for towards a definite objective and to make them self dependent the way they can work and they can take that any anything challenge they can accept and they can perform of their own and next uh, thank you madam for your explanation thank next uh, yes and next uh, i am uh, 
going to uh, Nonikula, madam, that yes, that what's your observations on because uh, many of the schools and education institutions for their uh, ex not extracurricular, but actually for the development perspective, the, there are different development we normally try to measure for the, we do some research work very recently, some CSR activities as per the United Nations program, uh, as a part of the SDGs, they are asking for the education for all. There will be no inequalities, there must be, there will be no hunger, no poverty. That is the target within 2030, we have to have that target. In this perspective, different companies in the district of South 24 Parganas, we are measuring that uh, a part of the RBNL project, Rail Rol Vikas Nigam Limited, they are working on uh, education. You will be surprising, it is surprise, a case of surprise, that within a 15 kilometers radius aerial distance from Kolkata Science Center near Ghatakpukur area, there are some underprivileged section of the society they are the first generation learner, first generation learner. And now they're come in, coming into the mainstream after getting education. To them, we need to give them the personality development teachings by not only formal education, but also there are different other activities where there is a cultural development. We are not saying religion, it is a culture because there are different sections of the society. Similarly, there are games, sports, health, nutrition. These are also other parameters. So similarly, as per your vast experience to work with these school children and also the students, communities, that how do you look for personality development? What are the measures we should take? It is not for any school will take. It is as a general society should address. It is the basic challenge from all sections of the society. One man cannot change the society. So all unanimously in a macro, macro level we can change. So definitely what's your suggestion so that the society really can have a change in the near future. Please, Madam, your, right. over to you. Uh, um, I, would, I would really say uh, the most important thing is uh, developing the desire to go outside your own comfort zone, that is for our students, to go out to the society, to be able to um, sort of extend yourself to do more uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, our children, they have been going outside, which I'm sure, Kohli Ma'am, a lot of your children must be doing is, within where they stay, going outside and having days where they're teaching children on the, you know, on the street or etc. So this is something that's been happening for a very, very long time that the children have of, I, uh, it's, I wouldn't call it the social service club as much as it runs through from class six to 12, that parents and children have on their own with us, uh, taken areas around close to their homes where they are extending themselves to teach them academics or even whether it is, uh, you know, having, uh, you know, playing a game with them, teaching them Ludo, etc. whatever. It, it reminds me of near Garyahat where those men sit under that bridge and yes. play chess. Yes. Yeah. I've seen them so, playing chess. Right? Yeah. So similarly, our children, what they really do is they go out with their Ludo, carrom board, etc. And they say, okay, an evening of fun where this activity is happening. And in their buildings, fortunately, they've taken time from the community hall. Children who are staying in, the, you know, like say there's this Victoria Terrace, the ITC kids. So they go out and get these kids in. So it's been, a, and this has really developed to be very honest in the last two years. So there's so much I keep saying has come out and I've just told the student, I said, continue with this. And uh, for themselves, they've got so much happening in school. We, uh, Kohli Ma'am has this fest where, where, yes, where our children participate every year. <laughs> and in fact, 
what we did this year, our fest this year was on words that was words like peace, harmony, caring, sharing, which was given to every school. Uh, Sushila Billa also participated or was a Billa High School they participated. We wanted to bring out that words such as this are not just words, but how are you going to use the word brotherhood or compassion? So uh, like uh, two schools combined with the words and we did a fest on just words, whether it was poetry, essay, uh, drama, to make them think, to get out of yourself and to give. So that's how uh, I think at the end of it, you know, we all develop our own skills because finally we do want to be great in sports or a musician. But I think that part of giving to society is so, so important, which absolutely. We try. Yeah. May I add something here, sir? Uh, you know, when ma'am was talking about uh, giving back to society, most of our children come from very privileged backgrounds. So giving back to society is the second step. First, we have to create um, sensitivity and awareness about people all around them, that everybody doesn't lead similar lives like they do. So in these last two years, the first year, I remember we did a project, a drive, you know, um, people were collecting food grains and um, masks and sanitizers that was happening. But uh, apart from that, what we did was we had this project or this drive, which we named destroy the digital divide. And uh, initially it was, uh, you know, we thought that we wouldn't be able to pull it off because um, how can we ask children to give or give up their tablet or their phones or their laptops or their PCs or even their televisions? Because right at the beginning, if you remember, government schools were conducting classes even through Durdarshan, through the television. At that time, smart TVs and PCs and laptops hadn't really entered the foray. So we drive where we involved the teachers, students, parents, the community around us. And we were surprised at the end of the drive how much uh, people donated and uh, the overwhelming support that we received at the end of, I think, about a month or month and a half. And to the extent that we had then chosen certain uh, groups of uh, people, organization, to whom we wanted to donate. Now we got a mail from this class eight boy who had heard about this project from one of the teachers. His father is a homeopath who didn't have a practice because of the pandemic. There was no money in the family and he did not have, and there was only one cell phone in the family, which the father owned. And his plea, if I can show you that letter, it'll bring tears to your eyes. He said, ma'am, I really, really, really want to study. Can you please help me? I'm not part of any organization. I've heard about this from X, Y, Z, but could you please help me? So we made, you know, we invited him to school and we gave him a laptop, which we had received as a donation from one of the children. And you should have seen that smile. I think that smile will stay with me forever. So it made the months of planning and uh, you know, trying to convince people to, I mean, it, to make people believe that what you have is a lot extra, a lot more than what you really need. And this understanding of what you need and what you desire, what you want. There's a big difference between want and need. To make our children realize that, that I felt was the real gift. If we have managed to, um, you know, to teach even one-tenth of our entire student population, we've done something. So this was a learning experience for all of us, not only the students. Thank you, madam. Actually, this uh, actually the part that you have told that normally we call it uh, definitely in our from our side we call the emotional dissonance basically there is a juxtaposition a significant gap between the actual and desired and as the desired level if it is too high and the performance of actual level sometimes it not match to these up to that desired level dissonance starts the difference 
and then automatically stress starts. And our objective is not only identifying stress, our basic motto is to reduce stress. I'm looking that one of our uh, participants raised hand, uh, Nidhi Chauhan. Nidhi, do you have any question? Yes, sir. So may I ask? Yeah, definitely. First of all, a very good evening to one and all present here. And I'm grateful to have a, such a beautiful session with uh, you, you ma'am. And ma'am, my question is, uh, what advice would you give to a colleague uh, who is stressed out about a deadline? Like, uh, yeah, Nidhi, I need to add one thing. You have said uh, about your colleague. Now you have to uh, just introduce who are your colleague, means your level. Uh, you are PG level student? Yes, sir. Uh, basically, the person who is working. Okay, so I can just uh, redefine it in a certain change that basically those who are going to professional domain from education level to professional domain. So your advice, yes, madam, both of you, any of you can uh, address the question. Uh, but what was the question? Uh, stress, uh, I, I didn't quite get the question better. It is basically they are saying that those who are just at the uh, end of, of their uh, education career after postgraduate level, now they are going to take the assignment of the professional domain of the corporate sector. So what's your advice for them to reduce stress? Okay. Uh, Koelima, would you like to answer that? Or... Um, all right. I think uh, Nidhi, thank you for the question. It's something that all of us, we faced at some point or the other and whoever's making this switch, this transition will also face in the future. One thing that I have learned from my personal life is to develop, um, uh, you know, to, to learn to be assertive. You know, being assertive and aggressive are two different things. Not to be aggressive, but to be assertive in the sense to know what is important and what is not important at that moment to prioritize. That is one thing. The second thing is to know how and when to say no. If you cannot say no, then you will be flooded with uh, different things at the same time and you will never be able to manage. And that will create a kind of stress and pressure. Another thing which uh, helps me personally is to make a routine, is to make a schedule, to make a list. I believe in lists. You know, when I go to work, I have a list of things to do. And uh, before I end the day, I again see how many of those I've been able to finish and if there is a spillover. So my tomorrow's list of things to do will have new ones and maybe some of the old ones. So that helps me schedule the time that I have, balance my work life and my personal life. Uh, prioritizing also helps because I know what I have to do immediately. And maybe some things which can wait for a few hours or wait maybe a day. So these things I find very helpful. Ma'am, what about you? Uh, first and foremost, uh, Nidhi, uh, Beta, I, my first uh, thing is wherever your friend is going to work or has chosen a career, is he or she, has she made the right choice? Because if you made the right choice, you know, then you kind of, because of that, knowing that this is what I want to do, you start working around it. So the first thing is, I hope they have made the right choice because I've seen so many people who do their, uh, do their subject and then they get into a job and then they figure out that, oh no, this was not what I really wanted. And so I would say that if he's made the right choice or she's made the right choice and she's got happiness in him or her, then take every step because it's a challenge. You're getting into a new life where there is competition. You got to deal with it. Stress is going to be there, but you got to deal with it. You got to and never act, I always say, instantly. Think, pause, no heavens are going to fall. If something happens with a colleague at that time, just be quiet about it. Think about it, come back. Answers are always there. But the first thing is just, you know, uh, 
uh, just keep a very balanced approach and uh, find your peace wherever you are, whatever you, wherever your friend is taking. And of course, all that Boyle Ma'am has said, uh, that applies in a working situation and environment. Yes, but never be hasty. That's what I would say. And never be over ambitious because if you want to climb the ladder a bit too fast and you know, that's also not good to get you there. And ma'am, I'd also like to add over here that I find, um, you know, when you're able to take a little bit of time out purely and purely only for yourself, that also helps in keeping. Absolutely. And yes. I agree hundred percent. If your profession is your passion, if both merge, then the pressure will always there be there, like you said, but it's not something that you can't deal with. You will deal with it because that's what you want to do. That's where you want to be. And if you give yourself a little bit of me time, you're able to be mindful in the sense, whatever you do, be in that moment. Don't, uh, you know, do something and think about something else. Your mind is somewhere else. So what you're doing right then is not good enough. And what you're thinking about, you're not doing justice over there. So it's a losing battle at both ends. Yes, uh, thank you. And I think that uh, session is now becoming very interesting. And uh, the participants will give their own feedback out of which whether they are getting and enjoying the session. But I am a particularly, I am enjoying. And I am <laughs> seeing that Madhusri raised her hand. Madhusri, do you have any question? Yes, sir. so I just want to know the two of you being uh, leaders of two very big schools and I'm sure every single day there should be something coming up that makes you worried. What is it that you do to de-stress personally uh, when, when you think you've had enough? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, when it comes to me personally, what do I do to de-stress? I'm the worst in de-stressing because I do stress. I do get up with this. I'm very good in putting on this morning smile, but I, uh, I, well, there are people and people. And I think even if I stress, I still, I, I, I'm able to deal with it. I am basically a positive person and I always try to find a solution. You know, I, I, I say, I don't like to get, to become a part of a problem, like they say, but I like to find a solution. So when I see a problem, I say, I'm sure there's a solution. It's stressing me now, but I'll find a solution. Besides that, I do have my, my me time comes late at night and I've made everybody aware of that, that this is my me time and people do respect my me time. And they know that I've done enough for everybody for the day. So give her her, her time and space. And I wish I could write on my WhatsApp on a Sunday, no calls, no messages. But I am still not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Mother, if you're looking at me for an answer, then I... Yeah, will... yeah, you continue, please, madam. Uh, what do I do? Uh, see, when I'm sitting in school and um, basically uh, troubleshooting, you know, people come to me with problems. So I have to have a solution. Like ma'am said just now that she doesn't like to be a part of the problem, but she tries to get at a solution. That's what I try to do. I'm still new at the game. Um, I, a lot of my seniors are guiding me, training me, teaching me. My experience in school also helps. Uh, so I try to do my job. Um, sometimes I'm the first to enter school. Sometimes I'm last to leave the school. But uh, when I leave school, I try and I leave school, you know, and not only physically, mentally also. Though, like I said, I'm still in the training period, mentally also, I'm still a student. I'm still learning. Uh, so there are times when the problem travels with me back home, but I try consciously to put it away. When I come home, I try and switch off and I switch on. Uh, and I try and do other things which keep me happy. It may be gardening on a Sunday. It may be um, watching a film. It may be reading, listening to music, calling up people. It could be anything. Just going out and just doing things which are completely different from my work life. So that's how I exhale. Thank you, ma'am. 
Okay, in this regard, may I add something, um, both of the panelists? I have a few points, so may I add? Yes, yeah. sir, please go ahead. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I just have a query because um, I know the students are very talented today, extraordinary, and also they are uh, getting attention because from the most of them, they are from, coming from micro single, families. Yes, single yes, child. So therefore, uh, sometimes I have seen, it is my personal observation. It is not any experimentation or no research, but I have seen that a student achieved nearly 90% marks, but her or his parents are not satisfied. Okay. Sometimes scolded. Okay. But my question is due to this type of uh, tension, the fear, pressure, they are interested for the other faculties of life enjoyment, but they couldn't. Sometimes it happens that how these students should encourage towards the literature. Suppose some students are interested to go for the NEET examination and join uh, to medical uh, or say engineering. But do you think that we should encourage them, whatever their specialization or the branch of studies would be in future, they should come to go through Sarat Chandra, Bankim Chandra, Rabindranath to them and to make the society alarming because few days back, I was attending with one of our alumnus. Uh, he's a noted uh, pulmonologist in Kol not only Kolkata in India, his name is Dr. Dhiman Gandhi. So all of you know probably his name. He's a a veteran doctor of more uh, nearly 80 years of age, he was speaking that he's a doctor. He told me because whatever published normally in the Desh Patrika or the Bengali literature in 60s, 70s, 80s, during their uh, time of student life, he knows everything on the literature. He told me that, yes, we are coming from one pattern of the society. If these students are not giving them a contact with the social pattern, which we do realize from the literature. Okay, so suppose we can say about Sarat Chandra, Polli Samaj. Okay, so this doctor, he will not be a doctor only for the higher class people. He will be doctor for all. So they need to know about the literature from there, they will learn the society. So from that background, I personally, it is my query or it is my inquisitive mind. So do you think that we should encourage students to their own language as well as literature? They should study irrespective of their specialized, any of the branches of their future career. Uh, Nani Kular, Madam, first. Uh, certainly, sir. Certainly. This is, we've got such rich literature. It's just exposing children to it. And the first place is the library and the librarian in a school. You can have a librarian who just sits and, you know, gives out books to a li librarian who actually reads with the children and awakes, awakens the interest in reading and knowing. So I would say definitely uh, you can't, you, you, we all have to be part of this drive to have the children read. In fact, uh, reading is learning and we have something called readathon in our school like a marathon and the class that reads the maximum amount of books or pages together gets this award in annual prize day in the junior middle and senior school or the child who's read the maximum amount of books now we fortunately because akshar does not has 25 students in a classroom we do not take more than 25 students in a classroom. So we're all of 550 children. We can do a lot more, you know, very closely. In bigger schools, it might get difficult to do this. So we are able to develop literature reading habits in our children. And it is very, very essential because reading is learning. And it that is the, you know, method. And whether you're a doctor or whether you're reading a science book, you've got to, I mean, we do encourage, but if a child does not want to read, you can't force them. You can only keep, you know, building the interest, but 
uh, if they're not interested. And of course, very lovely method is comprehension in a language class. It doesn't have to be the textbook. Just get it out of any of these, or you know, fiction books which are relevant and give it to the children. They've got no choice, but they have to learn about it. And maybe that will awaken an interest from that small paragraph to read much more. Yeah. Yes, madam. But sometimes it happens. It is another uh, in continuation of your deliberation, I can say that suppose Manik Bondopadai, okay, noted um, writer of Bengali literature. Yes. We know that Paddanodin Maji, it was a very good prose piece of Manik Bondopadai. So the way a teacher presents to the student, then yes. students, students get interest on Manik Bondopadai. Right. That's what was the contribution of this because he was a mathematician going to uh, presidency college to study mathematics, then turned to polity, uh, sorry, this literature and sought the uh, uh, literature for entire his life and then he carried on. Now the question here that the way we create interest among the students, then students, they are, their mind is very open. The way we can create on the subject, on literature or science or say other uh, faculties, including the other career options, they can take it. May not be related to career, but it is actually their entertainment, you can say, the time pass out of which they can pass their time. Okay. So in that way, I think you have explained very good way. And uh, I can request uh, Koeli, madam, do add something for this question or we can carry yes, on. I mean, I, uh, I agree 200% with what Mrs. Kuller just said. In our school also, we also till class 10, we have very few children, uh, 25, maybe 28, 29 at the most. We don't have more than that. So like ma'am said, we are also able to work very closely with our children with uh, various projects and activities. And even um, the CBSC board now, you know, has come up with various uh, projects and activities. Like they have the 100 day reading challenge uh, from class one to 10, they are participating in this. And uh, uh, say, if you're looking at the new normal and the fact that technology is a part and parcel of our lives, we have got a few Kindles in our library where books are uploaded, the digital version. So if reading the physical form of a paper bound uh, book does not appeal to you, you want to hold a gadget, so be it, but read. And like Ma'am said, you can do wonderful uh, comprehension activities using these um, beautiful um, pieces of literature, works of art, actually. So whether you want it or not, we are going to do it. And eventually we hope that the love for it will grow. Thank you, madam. And uh, uh, Professor Shengupto, I yeah, think I, you have a question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, no, I, regarding the stress uh, which uh, Madhushri uh, questioned, so now I just got a statement. It's not a question. I found uh, in my professional career, I produced the best when I was under stress. You know, when I was not under stress, the outcome that came out was not to the level which I would produce under stress. And that's just a statement I wanted to. Uh, I mean, I wanted to share with you. I quite now, agree with you, sir. <laughs> I agree too. <laughs> and uh, another just. Uh, to, I mean, okay, at a later date, I will uh, tell them I just wanted to uh, talk to our dignitaries at a later date at the end. I see. For now, it's. Sure. Thank you, Professor Sengupta, Thank for you. your input. And uh, I think actually uh, our, our participants are also ready with their, some of the questions. Already we crossed uh, one of our uh, other few requests came from uh, Sreya Chatterjee. Shreya Chatterjee, are you there? And also Akanksha, they will be also ready with their whatever the outcomes they are getting. At present, already Nidhi Chohan told about whatever very good answer given from both our, of our panelists. And basically it is today, it is called the quality in work life. How we will maintain your quality. And every organization by maintaining their quality, they are doing many positive thinking there and today, they are taking different intervention strategy by providing different types of avenues, not only by given the uh, extramural activities, but also the intramural activities. That means the recognition, participation, 
and also the different types of policies. That means to the organizations, this human resource, that means this personnel policies to connect with the overall organization strategic fit, which we call that is an alignment that already been started for decades. Now the question is, we were discussing on stress and discussion on more on stress, I already becoming stressful. So now we have to come <laughs> rid of the stress. How, what is the policies? Because always we are uh, becoming last two years, almost this is March come. So I can remember March uh, in 2020, we started stress because the pandemic <laughs> society, it became giving us stress. So I, am, I have no intention to give stress to any of you but we have to, redressal of stress is important. I just already told in my setting tone of the concept, we have told that the possible stressors came from the, either from the society, yes, that means the environment. Similarly, from the organization's point of view, where we are working or the students are studying, that means it is their organization. Similarly, in their personal life, that means there are three inputs. And if we now culminate into these are the possible sources from where we are coming into the different symptoms. Now, after getting these symptoms the way, that is the basic tricks. That means that is the basic intelligence. A person who is emotionally stable or where the dissonance is less, if we can maintain the dissonance into a very significant less, the person is quite mature. And now out of which the consequences come in their psychological level, physiological level and behavioral level. If a person under stress and depression, he may be erratic. Okay, basically the person is good, but on the particular situation, he can control the stress due to which the behavioral symptoms becoming erratic, which is against the organization's norms, rules, regulation and code of conduct. It is a problem. Okay, now we have to give solution. I've already told during the session to moderate that we come with a conclusion because normally I have worked with a few renowned uh, senior professors. So when you organize seminar, workshop, at the end, we should come with some conclusions that will be a note. So it is my uh, assumption, I think our uh, two esteemed panelists, they will agree with me the way we can contribute and control and the way we can not only control others, first we start from ourselves, myself, that I can control myself. What will be that control level? There are different types of say anxiety because Time Magazine, different times we read the Time Magazine from where we are getting different types of reflections of thought to these youngsters, adolescent stage, though those who are the budding, the futures of the country, they are having under stress, they are doing different types of activities which are not at all fruitful for their life. We want to get rid of the situation. So why, what are the situations that already uh, both of our panelists highlighted into their uh, deliberations uh, that stress always is there. So it is not actually that uh, Kueli Madam told that it, what are the sources, there are pressures, we need to go for internalization. That means the intrinsic desires, sometimes there should have a limit. So that is a control technique. And also that is the question of these different co-curricular activity it is not extra. It is co, that means it is, it is the basic mainstream which we need to streamline our thoughts with the main subjects along with this. Am I correct, madam? That means yes that we need to align with our system, that it is nothing extra. Extra means that it is not that way important. But now it is co, co means, yes, it is continuously, that means the word Japanese word we use in our management students, Kaizen. That means it is continuous improvement. We want to improve continuously by maintaining a good group. That means quality circle. We want to maintain a good circle. And if people are having, I sometimes have seen many people in their friend list, if it is in the Facebook, if there are many groups in the WhatsApp group, other groups, there are many friends. But there is a question in my mind, how many friends 
normally they do interact in their normal course of action instead of technological friends, how many actual friends are there? If you do have a good quality circle, then definitely there will be stress can be less. Am I correct, uh, Kular Madam? Nani Kular yes. Madam? That means yeah. sometimes it happens. You also do have experience because students are always busy with these technologies. It is not their fault at all because we need to guide them because technology automatically society four points, uh, industry 4.0, they are coming into the next devices. What will come? Innovation, I don't know. Technology, we want to work with technology. It is a part of our life. And that is both of you have very much interacted that now the way because of the uh, uh, Noni Kullar Madam has uh, told about the high that aspiration sometimes needs to be controlled. And in this perspective, this is my last concern that I am asking that in the other countries, mostly the UK and the USA, they start in the school level, the profiling so that if we can measure that the quotient so that we can counsel the parents as well the children that which route they can go so that they can be successful in their life. And at the end, we want to get the happy life. What is the meaning of happy? The definition is important, happiness. So happy life is important. We have seen from our mythological perspectives that yes, it is our basic demand that we want to be happy. Am I correct, Koeli Madam? That we need yes, to sir. be happy. Like I began, I began the session by saying, uh, these two lines that have stuck in my head, you're always free to be happy. So, you know, we need to realize that the control is in our hands. Very easy to say that, you know, so-and-so behave badly and uh, I didn't get what I want, but whether you're happy or not is in your hands. So we are always free to be happy. And uh, that is what we need to remember. So uh, the way actually uh, that you both of you very excellently elaborated this topic, interacted with our uh, uh, students, participants, their questions. We are very much happy and also enlightened with your deliberations. If both the panelists, we ask if anything you want to give your concluding remark, you can please add. Otherwise, we next to uh, forward to Sreya Chatterjee uh, for her takeaways. Uh, no need to learn, madam. Yeah. Okay, Professor yes. Singhupta. No, no, after uh, ma'am, they have spoken. I just before Shreya, I'd like to say something. Um, I'm, uh, you know, when we are talking about happiness, when we're talking about stress, uh, I'm reminded uh, of seeing Arun Shori once on TV. And we, we know that he's got a child with uh, disability, additional needs. And he says that, you know, uh, when I look at my child, I forget my stresses because I can see how he's dealing with what he's dealing. And yet he's got a smile on his face. Koili Mam had said that we all come from a very, we, you know, our children come from privileged families with so much. And uh, we got to value what we've got. And um, in, our, in, in our little small worlds, we got to find that happiness and, uh, you know, learn to de-stress. Uh, so, and we were, you know, when it comes to school education, I just want to say we were very, very fortunate that we had uh, Professor Yashpal, uh, who was our patron and chairman. Everybody's heard of Professor Yashpal. I don't need right. to, you know. Yeah. So he was our uh, patron and chairman of the school Akshar in 1998. And as far back as 1993, he had if you'll remember, formed the Yashpal Committee, which was, I have it in front of me, which was learning without burden. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's stated that learning has become a source of burden and stress for children and their parents. Learning should be without burden to make learning a joyful experience, to move away from textbooks, to be a basis of examination and to remove stress from children. It recommended he, 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 the uh, Yashpal committee recommended major changes in the design of syllabus. So it's really us educationists who are the driving force to de-stress our children, to make design our curriculum in such a way that children 
learn with joy and parents are called in to understand this system it is it is away from traditional teaching we have come like this at 21st century the nep also talks about it so we've got a lot going and i think we just have to retrieve it you know we tend to go back into our schools and probably because of completion of syllabus etc cetera, etc cetera. but times are changing we need to as educationists be the for torch bearers to keep our children de stressed call in our parents speak to them and make them aware of what is available outside there's a place for every child outside every adult outside so it's for us to take them through that path thank you madam professor sen gupta please yeah uh, i just wanted to i just uh, thought uh, i will share with you one statement that i met uh, uh, professor richard dejai in central florida university he made a statement that you are happy as long as your neighbors are happy so when it came when you talked about sensitizing our children to understand the needs of those who are uh, i mean less privileged so that is a very uh, something excellent that you are doing i'm really and it's a great honor for me to know you uh, uh, through this uh, panel discussion and uh, particularly my youngest sister was in school uh, shushila villa girls school so it's a great <laughs> honor to know you ma'am and you, uh, and uh, particularly kullar ma'am i wanted my son to join your school but when i knew came to know about your school uh, he was in not senior class he was in middle school so he <laughs> not <laughs> quite much wanted but at the same time i did go to your school but at that time possibly the seats were as you said only 25 in a class we huh. could not go through but uh, i'm happy that he had interned in iicp and did his final year project in iicp wonderful so to that extent uh, he was really acquainted with you know the those uh, i mean what do you call Uh, his less uh, privileged friends. So, okay, okay. okay. Thank yeah, that's you. all. Thank, Thank you. you so much, and I'm really Thank glad meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, Professor Shen Gupta. Thank you. So already we are having the words end of this session, and uh, uh, from my end to conclude, it is uh, anonymous that stress is part of human life. We have to cope up with the stress and some stress coping. Uh, situations that the way we can overcome it how to reduce it uh, that is our technique and out of the situations and the deliberations discussions and the concept note and interactions critical uh, analysis from both the learned uh, our panelist we got that we need to keep a very positive attitude we have to accept that there are some events that we need to control because situations that will happen that is automatic spontaneous we need to be very much assertive not aggressive learn to manage we our time so scheduling and we have to make some habits hobbies interest scheduling of life and the basic thing we need to practice and we need to get a social support and simultaneously if it is then control there are lots of suggestions to manage stress as a part of change of the lifestyle it came with some uh, from the different medical side and also some good routine of that uh, life structure with the physical activity the sleeping the rest of the body that are given from the psychologist point of view people are uh, who exercise tend to feel that less anxious they enjoy with their time positivity so like they are running they are swimming dancing cycling there are different types of these things dieting is also a part of it which is also creating some benefits eating healthy foods extend beyond your uh, other things which is also controlling the mental health this is also a part of it we need to take the advice of the uh, doctors medical uh, experts and consultants we have to maintain our life in a balanced human life and some relaxation techniques that is a very age old concept from the indian ethos and values on the practices of the yoga that already been practiced into our uh, four yogas that is in the raj yoga 
the way we can go for these uh, meditations, which is also part, it is meditation is not actually religion. So it is actually a part of life to control our human life each and every day and control the stress and working life. It is a work-life balance. And also the other techniques that as part the advice of the experts, both from the psychologists and physicians and also the mentors and counselors, out of which we will definitely, this type of practice will reflect into our behavior that we respond to our society, both at the individual level and as well as the collective level. This is from my end that uh, I actually learned from this uh, today's session. And I think all of our uh, panel members, they will also agree with me that yes, this is our basic discussions. So now I come to our uh, uh, participant. Ms. Shreya Chatterjee. Ms. Shreya, yes, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, Shreya. So can you please um, enlighten us with your observation because from your age, how do you feel the session and how it is your takeaways that you can also structure your mind? Shreya, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone present here. Uh, the webinar was truly an insightful one because stress is a everyday part of our lives and uh, we did learn a lot of like uh, the uh, techniques to handle stress. I would like to share my screen uh, and present the key takeaways of today's session. Is it uh, visible? Yes, we are. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, so the uh, first is, as uh, uh, like the as I said in the beginning, stress is a part of our life. It, is, it will be there. So children often experience uh, stress, which are related to academics, social pressure, peer pressure, and there are other psychosocial uh, factors as well, which contributes uh, to stress. And it has also like in these two years, uh, in co due, due to COVID, their uh, sleep cycle and eating uh, eating pattern has also got disrupted. So back to school anxiety is stress and, and it is normal, but it's important to assure them uh, that they aren't alone and uh, giving the child right attention and uh, making them feel important is, and secure is important. Uh, next is uh, certain causes of stress uh, of any uh, uh, individual are the societal factors organizational factors where they're working or school can also be, as uh, Shubhendu sir said, uh, school can also be a uh, children's um, uh, reason for stress. And personal factors, uh, individual factors are also certain causes of stress. Uh, next is counseling. Parents are important. So it's important for parents to be supportive and have clear expectations from uh, their children without being too strict uh, also uh, they should uh, pro like uh, parents should help children to promote a healthy living uh, helping children to develop uh, societal skills uh, life skills uh, so that it becomes easy for them to adjust in uh, schools next is participation in co-curricular activities which actually helps in uh, improving uh, well-being uh, so participating in non-classroom activities as well are vital for students' uh, social and uh, um, uh, emotional development, which was missing in these two years. Uh, next is personality development is also a crucial for our children's uh, life and also moving out of their comfort zone uh, leads to personal growth and also help uh, them you know, to develop skills and lead to a holistic uh, development. Uh, next is some certain uh, techniques which are important to reduce stress, which is having a to-do list, making a schedule, being assertive. Like it is important uh, to say, like learn to say no uh, uh, to the opinions or the beliefs and instead of being defensive or passive. Uh, next is taking time out for yourself, which I also diligently follow. That is the me time. It actually helps our uh, brains to... Uh, like uh, to busy brains to unplug and unwind. Uh, having social support, friends, family members are also uh, important in reducing stress. And lastly, stress, uh, like we often view stress in a negative, as a negative sensation, but it also uh, actually helps in meeting challenges and motivates us uh, to get our work done. 
thank you. Uh, uh, so these were the learnings uh, from the students end. I think so. Was uh, been blocked out for some reason. We just okay, we did. Yeah, he's just coming in now. Journey While uh, Sir is joining, I would just like to say one point of time that I felt really stressed out in school. It was when uh, I transitioned from class 10 to class 11. I was an avid, uh, you, know, you know, I was very into yes. physics, very much into physics. I wanted to be a physics teacher, but once I reached class 11, I, this time completely changed for me and it was very stressful to, you know, absorb the complete increase in the amount of studies that one has to do. I don't know when this would come up and as representatives, I'm sure you are working on this sudden transition that happened. But that's only what I pray for students today that very soon, you know, this sudden difference between the class 10 and the 11 uh, is reduced slightly by the board. That is, you know, that is doable, I think. Thank you, Madhushri. And uh, we can invite Akanksha. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> first of all, a very pleasant evening to all of you, honorable our speakers. I think spring season has hit us hard now. So we have reached to this amazing, amazing session. It is a sincere pleasure to see that this event is graced by presence of two personalities with such high stature. Heartiest thanks to both of you for gracing today's session. Your leadership and accomplishments are an inspiration to all of us. Talking about our topic of stress management, what I believe that stress is not something which we want to take, which we want to have. It automatically burdens us with one reason or the other. Though what we can control is how we handle the stress, how we tackle the situation and how we get the required output. Thank you so much to both of our speakers to share their views on this topic. I am very, very grateful to Sri Shikshaitan Foundation for always giving us the best opportunities through and through the process. With deep sense of gratitude, I would like to extend my thank to our moderator, Professor Shivendu Mojundar sir, for being the catalyst of the session and keeping the audience engaged till the end. Also, I would put my heartiest thanks to our prof uh, principal sir, professors, and the entire Calcutta Business School family for their untiring efforts. Last but not the least, a big thank to the viewers, the audience, the students, everybody for being the rock solid support system and encouragement. Thank you so much everyone for joining this webinar. I hope uh, that we meet again, though I'm in, a, I'm in the second year. I just wish that <laughs> soon. I just uh, uh, hope that we meet in a physical mode now to learn more and more from both of you. Till then, I wish that all of you stay safe and and healthy in the stuff time. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.